so what else they didn't tell us this past weekend? Um, you know, what they don't tell you. Dark Star, the PGA Tour had a crappy Players' Championship when they really needed a killer Players' Championship. How crappy was it? It defined crap. <laughs> it just defined crap. <laughs> so, thank God for them that Scheffler won. Thank, yeah, thank God. If Scheffler wasn't there, uh, yeah, it was. Tell it was, us, though, how crappy was it? It was really crappy. Very crappy. Lay it on me. All right. Anyway, I, I wake up Sunday morning. We want to see a great tournament, and, and there's no stars there. So my, I actually took the time and wrote this down because I was just that bored, actually. Mm-hmm. But six of the top seven pursuers were 50th or worth in the world rankings. Remember, this is their flagship event. This is the greatest field ever amassed in the best history. Best of the best. Of, best the, of the best. Because the, the best, best play played here, there. Yeah. yeah. The best of the best play there. So Apparently the, not. The only mm-hmm. pursuer within five shots of Scheffler in the top, inside of the top 50 in the world was Tommy Fleetwood. Yeah, lay it on me. Who was chasing? Tommy who were the, Fleetwood. Who were the five guys? So Min Woo Lee. Was Name and rank. Min Woo Lee, 50th. Mm-hmm. Cam Davis, 101st. Tommy Fleetwood, 26th. Is it Ra, the sun god, or Rye? And I hate to say this. I know he wears two gloves. I don't know his first name. It's he was 127th. Two glove Ra. Two glove Ra. Um, 127th Ray, in the world. No, he was, uh, he was 120th. Ramey was 225th. And Beazenhout is 81st. Those are your Ramey. within five chasers Sunday morning. Those are the guys that have a legitimate shot. Now you go down to six. That's, Ramey still was in the hunt after the catastrophe? He really got hosed on that island green. We'll circle back to that. We are going to come back to that. Circle That's back to that. Yeah, bad. So then you go six back. At least you draw an M. But Lemurth and Hoagie we're going to circle back to because he's up there for, because he set a course record kind of. Um, anyway, Lemur. yeah, the, the, the point is no star power. It's Scheffler. Thank God Scheffler was there. But actually, it's a little disappointing because if Scheffler wasn't there, it would have been a great Corn Ferry event. He did dominate the Corn Ferry <laughs> event. He did. He dominated the Corn week. Ferry event this yeah, week. Yeah, just when they needed something really special, they got Corn Flakes. The dud of no, duds. You know, no disparagement meant to Corn Flakes, but that's what they got. They got these are like when you oatmeal. Get, these are like when you get those eggs and they're not done and they're loose. and the, ugh, it, was, it was bad. Which ties into a lot of other points. So... It was a crappy players because they had nobody there basically on uh, the weekend. Correct. Except for Chef. Yeah. Okay. Uh, other interesting point ties right into that. So John Rahm, a star in the star marquee group on Thursday, shoots one under and then withdraws with a stomach virus i'm gonna stomach. i'm gonna come back to you with that all right so he withdraws with a stomach virus now his tea time which i don't like to hear stomach virus because it's such a throwaway i'm like it's ah, you it's know. the flu or no no yeah, no no it's flu like symptoms is what they use it's only, it's just too easy he's a young healthy guy it's stomach virus really and then well, i'm coming to you i'm coming to you but the other I'm thing here. that bugged me was his tea time on friday was now it was 12.56. So he's teeing off Friday, 12.56, with Rory and Scheffler, the marquee group, in this tournament that the PGA Tour really wants to have a great event. They need all their guys. So they're, you know, when the word came over to the PGA Tour on Friday morning, presumably at some point in time, and said, Rom's not, not going to be there at the 12.56 time, somebody at the tour was heard saying, what the... F- and Jay passed out. Um, so <laughs> that's how they reacted. And and Jay probably said, where the f- is Ron, John, right now? I want to talk to him right now. And they said, well, he's on the plane. He's on his plane. That's exactly He's He's not here, you stole Mr. My Monahan. Line. I'm yeah. sorry. No, I'm going to come to you. Okay. So it, he's got the, when did they tee off on on Thursday? Do you know offhand? It was early, right? I think they had the premier 8 o'clock start. Yeah, so they get like the that. early, late. Beautiful times, not windy on, on Thursday morning. He plays, for him, relatively crappy. Mediocre at best. And, uh, and then he's, he gets a stomach virus suddenly. Yeah. 
suddenly, and you said a couple things that were funny about Scheffler, well, and then and then give me the medical point yeah. of view. So, well, do the Scheffler thing. So, oh, yeah, it's a good thing he didn't have dinner with Scheffler. Exactly. There would have been nobody on the leaderboard on it's, Sunday morning. It's a good thing that Scotty <laughs> didn't have the 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 clams or the oysters. Oh, the oysters. He didn't yeah. have the oysters that John had. Oh. Um, but beyond that, so here it is Friday morning because I like to walk through these things. It's not just that obvious to me. Friday morning arrives, he gets up. He's a dad of a little tiny kid, well, six he month sh- old. He should two- lay off the oysters. He's got too many kids already. He's got a six month old, two boys, six month old and a almost two year old. And so he's used to being sleep deprived when he's home. And he misses those kids, I know, because he's, he, by all reports, a big family guy. And there he is in Ponte Vedra. He gets up at six or 6.30 or 7 a.m. I can't believe he would go any later than seven in the morning. His tea time's not till one. So he's got all the time in the world to rally. Yeah. Now, the, does the PGA Tour want him to rally? Absolutely. So, and should he feel obligated? Yes. He's not only helping the, himself, but he's helping the tour. He's helping his colleagues at the business, Jay and the team. It's important that he's there. That he's going to be the marquee TV group. Without him there, it's a problem all the way around. And you, as a physician, said to me, if you need to play... Yeah. What if, do you do? If he needed to play, he gets some he gets some Fenergan, he gets he gets medicine for the nausea, he gets some IVs. If he's up at seven, he gets three, four bags in of, of fluid in him, and he's he can play in other words, he can play easily. He's got all the time in the world. He's got all the time in the world. To get and, fixed up. You know, you just you just mentioned there may even be more to it than we were talking about in our pre-show, because yeah, it's Friday afternoon. Everybody is supposed to be watching him and Rory and Scheffler on Friday afternoon. So is he a little more upset maybe about some of these OWGR things, et cetera, than we lead on? But the point is he could have played, but he was on the plane at 10 in the morning. He was in Arizona before his tea, before his tea time because he just he needs, the, he needs the break. I'm not playing well. I'm getting ready for Augusta. You're going to make me play in that match play thing. I've... I've been playing almost every week. I played bad at the Palmer on Saturday. Yep. Last and, week. So, yep. Saturday and Sunday. He had a bad weekend at the Palmer. Um, I wonder he if needs he went the time home. off. He didn't go home, probably, right? No. Why would he go? No. Well, could, well, he wanted to go home. He probably had obligations with the tour, right? He's got right. he's got business meetings at in Ponte Vedra, so he goes up for, from or goes over from Orlando just down the road yeah. to Ponte Vedra, and you know M- Monday. And he, so he's not home. He's on the phone. He's doing video calls with Kelly and the kids and missing them. And then the, the, the tournament happens. He's not playing well. Probably doesn't have a lot of time to practice because of the corporate stuff. Here, here's the other thing right? to throw in there. Mm-hmm. These players like Rom knew, I'm not going to get finished tonight, Friday. I'm not going to finish Friday. I'm coming back. I mean, I think Scheffler and, and Roy played eight, seven at least, if not eight or nine holes. Yet, yet another on Saturday morning. wrinkle to what they yeah. what they didn't tell you. What they didn't tell you, yeah. which we will another get to wrinkle. Again. To another that. wrinkle. Yeah, we're we're getting to that. It's on the list. But absolutely. So not only is he thinking I could play bad and miss the cut, but I got to stay Saturday anyway. He gets he gets Sergioed when Sergio had to make the Texas football game. That's so right. he had to, he had That's to withdraw. Right. The poor right. Spanish people keep getting Sergioed. You know, because he can't WD before the tournament unless he feigns an injury. Right. And and let's not forget, audience, to get the PIP money, you have to be there. You don't get the PIP money if you don't show up to the elevated events this year. And the PGA Tour is tracking it all the way until the FedEx Cup. That's all part of the PIP payout. Yes, we pledged to you the amount of money that we did, but you only got a little bit. Mm, so he has to play. He has to tee it up, play. which he does. So, uh, you know, it'd be nice to know if anybody out there knows what time that he goes wheels up on his jet at a Ponte Vedra. That would be nice to know. Was it 8 o'clock in the morning? Was it 9 o'clock in the morning? I, I'm with you. I think it was pretty early. Yeah, I He wanna, got up and bingoed. I want to know where he ate. <laughs> yeah. He was on the text with his agent or his team well, you know, yeah. at 7 saying, hey, I got to get out of here. I'm not going to be playing. And the agent said, how about a stomach virus? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Stomach virus. Whatever, like, whatever you think. I, I, I still like the football players that get the flu-like symptoms so they don't have to practice. But yeah. the, the point is, it's just, he didn't handle it at all. It doesn't he called make sense. his agent. His agent took care of it. Yeah. He didn't handle it. So the, the agent handled everything. I mean, that's, that's, I'm, it's just too, you know, we got a word for that in Texas. It's called suspicious. 
I think he wanted not to be there. I think he wanted to be at home with his kids. I think he's tired from right. a couple. Of, and I think he's not playing up to his standards, which is still high. I was just going to mention, he was not going to win the tournament. Correct. He, he just, just playing with Scotty Scheffler. He knew he wasn't going to beat Scheffler. There was no positives for him to stick around. And the one he really wants, the next one is the Masters right. coming up. So a little rest, rejuvenate with the kids. Who knows? Maybe there, maybe one of his kids is not feeling great. Maybe Kelly's missing him. Who knows? But that happens when you have little tiny kids. Even if you're a wealthy guy, it's not the same as being there. No. And, uh, you know, yeah. and off it, can, he went. it might even be worse nowadays FaceTiming. Yeah, maybe. It may be more homesick. Yeah, yeah, out of sight, out of mind. Well, right. here's, let me put a dot on it. Just say, is Jay Monahan and the tour happier today with John or less happy with John? They're less happy. They're far less happy with John because he didn't show up for them at the big event. Yep. This is their only major. Right. But John's got him where he needs him. I mean, well, yeah, but that doesn't it's, mean it's, they're happy about it. Yeah. No, they're not. The, he's not drinking the Kool-Aid like Rory. That's why, like I said, that thought that came to me, to my final thought to reiterate, is the fact that he's, un, he's the one guy who's a little outspoken against the PGA with the OWGR. His friend's still in Europe. The DP Tour has taken a massive hit. So he's the one guy that may be putting up a little resistance. And this, mm-hmm. this could have been a little acting out by John. As we said in the immediate preceding episode about the... He, he might have had dinner with Jay on Thursday night, and that's what gave him the virus. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Jay the virus. Maybe. All right. But All right. I, I think we said in the designated event show just a couple of days ago that uh, there might, might very well be a couple of guys on the PGA Tour in the marquee, the top 20, the PIP guys who aren't entirely comfortable with the way this is unfolding, that you know, their friends and colleagues are not benefiting, and that they're just not, you know, some guys get real comfortable with being in the, in the marquee, you know, the favored group, and some just aren't comfortable there. And we're speculating that John very well may be not entirely comfortable, even though he's doing it, going along with it. Spieth might be in that group, and there might be a few others. Because we do, I think we do know that, that Rom and and Sergio are pretty friendly, if not very friendly. And they let's just yeah they haven't had the falling out that Rory no, and Sergio think, had. Obviously, Rom Rom just recently in like October ish talking about the OWGR and what a joke that is in his words. Um, that Garcia, it was at the BMW. Yeah, right. No, that Garcia yeah. should absolutely play. That Sergio has done so much for the European Tour. So if they're not good buddies then at least they have a very healthy friendship. Um, but it just occurred to me, and Sergio is a family guy, but it just occurred to me, I've forgotten, and we haven't mentioned this enough, who, who's the first guy that sticks around, didn't need to, stuck around to hug John coming off the win at the US Open, his first major, who's the first guy that gives him a big hug? Yeah, Sergio was there. First guy. No, oh, who? Phil. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, that's right. Phil, Phil and him are obviously were extremely tight until. Where's Phil play golf? Well, they both went to Arizona State. Yeah. No, no, right now. Uh, well, on right. live, yeah. So right. Mickelson I, I is behind the scenes, probably on the phone with John regularly. Well, I think they they right? man, they're I, family guys. I I doubt they're doing that much anymore. Mm, my mm, last life spe- goes on. Right. I mean, but my last speculation. Where does point, Phil live? Well, they, I live in Arizona. Where's yeah. Where's John live? Well, they still they're Arizona State guys. They're well, still so so Rom lives school. in Scottsdale. No, where's Phil? Scottsdale. Scottsdale, right? So, so Amy and Kelly are friendly. Probably still. Who friendly, ha, Who sure. has a lot of mother mother type advice to give? Amy. Amy. How many kids do they have? Three, two girls and a boy, at the Mickelson household. I believe so. Yes. It's just too many. These no. are too many tidbits there for my. Right. They, they, well, they 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 talk. Right. You know, I'll tell you what's going to be a problem, though, because and then we are going to be finished with this subject. This the Rory Rom relationship for the Ryder Cup could be a problem. Yeah, because so. obviously Rory and Sergio do not speak anymore. Not, no, and just the the whole no. Sergio thing made me think of that. That's going to be a problem for them, even competing in the Ryder Cup against the could U.S. Be. squad. Could be. So yeah. Could be. Um, so what else they didn't tell us this past weekend? Um, you know, what they don't tell you. Tomorrow Sports, they also had a crappy players' championship. They um, did indeed. You know, and they, they don't have to care too much right now, but it is it points out some head scratchers on Tomorrow Sports. So 
Tomorrow Sports may be taking over the PGA Tour. That would certainly be a goal, we think. And they certainly want marquee players. They have Tiger at the top, Rory number two. They have Justin Thomas. They have John Rahm, but not in that order. So Tiger, Rory, John Rahm, Justin Thomas. Those are the four headliners of Tomorrow Sports. Right. And then they have seven other guys. Morikawa, I'd say, is a headliner. Well, not, yeah, but he's after those first four. Okay, sure. And how did they do? How, how did they? I have them all written down. Here. Tell us. How I will they? tell you. How did okay. they do? I know. I know this. a couple of them missed the cut. I got it right here. <laughs> um, how would Tiger do the players? Oh, that's right. He doesn't play in the he PGA Tour. He doesn't play events. in anything but the majors um, anymore. Rory got cut. Rom withdrew. Justin Thomas tied sixty. Don't know where his game is lately. Morikawa, to your point, tied thirteenth. T13, but the, the the leaders of the Tomorrow Sports contingent at the players. So that's a different league now. It's almost like live, right? So you got the Tomorrow Sports guys playing at the players. Are you applying that they did that on purpose? <laughs> I, I thought I was stating it. I don't know if I was applying it. I thought I was explicit. Justin Rose and Homa, T6. They both T6. So they're carrying the flag for tomorrow. So the marquee players, Horschel, not a marquee player, but outspoken cut. Adam Scott finished 71st out of 75. Solo 70. Who am I missing? Xander Shoffley, T19. Yeah. Oh, and Fitzpatrick, who, I have to be honest, he annoys me. <laughs> I don't know why. He just does. He's, I, I don't know why he's taking so many shots at these live players. And I'm like, who are you? Why? Just, just be quiet. Be grateful that you won the U.S. But Open you know, and move look, that, that's sports. Obviously, he's two. His mark. He's got two marquee victories: the U.S. Amateur and the U.S. Open, both at the same course. Obviously, he loves that course. I, I don't think we're going to hear a lot from him. Probably not. Maybe that's just. Maybe somebody said, "Hey, go make some money while you can. Say yeah. something nasty about Liv, and it'll get you some pip money." Because you're not going to be back at Brookline for seven. And years. he got on the Tomorrow Sports and the pip money. So yeah. you know, that that to me is like selling out. I mean, pick up your game. Just play better. You'll make more money. Play better. Don't have to do it the sneaky way, NASCAR, horse Um Anyway, so that's what they did. So they have a you know cuts, do not plays, withdraws. They just had a, and I went down the list. I think I got everybody. Um, they had a crappy players, just like the the tour had a crappy players. So I thought that was interesting. Also, just to wrap the tomorrow sports angle, who's still not on tomorrow sports? The winner at the players. Yeah, Shufflers? I think that's a glaring, like, why hasn't Scotty Scheffler been announced as a member of Tomorrow Sports? Let me ask you something. Is there anybody on Tomorrow Sports yet who played golf at the University of Texas? I think there's a University of Texas, him and Spieth, potentially. Yeah, Spieth, Spieth is noticeably absent. We've said yeah. that before. Scheffler, not there. Matsuyama, not there. So, and uh, and it, Fowler, it, not there. Yeah. So, so uh, Now, Spieth's the big one they really want, but Scheffler's right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't. They're not on Tomorrow Sports. No. And Tomorrow Sports now has eleven players out of the eighteen that they need. I would have think they would have announced already, but I don't know that. All right, moving right on. What's your next one? They didn't tell us. They didn't tell us well, about the it, early well, late start. They didn't. Well, the early late start to me because one of the two of us really likes the betting angle. <laughs> I take that one. All right. So, well, I'm working on that app for Live. I know. You know that. Well, of the top 30, so I just, Live w- once again, Live Saturday gaming. morning, you know, I wake up, have coffee. It's probably still dark out half the time. Was it the cappuccino? Or it's, a, it's an espresso, actually. Oh, yeah. very good. Anyway, 20 of the top 30, which are really the guys who have a chance to win the tournament, came from the early late start on thursday friday on thursday friday see and i've been saying this for years as you know we mentioned a year ago about tiger having the early late in every single pga champion it's a massive advantage okay well you have to give at least 30 seconds on what that really means i mean a lot of our guys know that in the audience know that but maybe somebody else is watching this so the statistics it's about a 55 56 percent chance of making the cut what is the early late Oh, well, you tee off first thing on Thursday morning. Early on Thursday. Early on Thursday. In the morning. So you've, you're rested. Well, then, then what do you do on Friday? And Friday you tee off late. You tee off after so you, 12. After 12. You show up. You play Thursday in good conditions. The course is perfect. Greens no are wind, perfect. Greens are perfect. Usually less windy in the morning. You get off the course on Thursday afternoon. You can work on what you need to work on. Yeah, it's one And o'clock. you get a good night's sleep. You have lunch. You get to sleep Go in to on range. Friday. Check in with your coach, do so a little putting. Besides the weather, it's a massive rest early advantage. Dinner, yeah. Early dinner, early right. dinner, early to bed, 
And then the next morning you get up and you got nothing to do. Yeah, you can relax and do whatever. It's, you don't as tee opposed, off till one o'clock. As opposed to the late start, you finish at dark. You can't work on anything. Mm -mm. You have a late dinner. You sleep maybe okay. And you're up before light. You're up before warm dawn up. to warm, warm up. up. So the early late being morning time, day one, afternoon time, day two, actually, literally, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. literally gives you a whole day off advantage Right. So I, I'm actually hour. playing a day, but I have a day between my rounds. Yeah. You have nothing if you're late early. You have you have your sleep, and that's no, no. It. You don't play well Thursday afternoon. You're on the phone maybe with your coach, yeah, uh, or not putting well, and then you're back on the tee Friday morning trying to figure it out. You know? Right. And in the dark. That's why you know at the majors they will have the lights on the range so guys can start warming up in mm -hmm. the dark. It's, it's it's ridiculous. Not to mention now that golf is a winter sport, mm -hmm. it can be you know thirty degrees in the morning and you can have a real feel in the seventies um, mm -hmm. by one o'clock. I mean I'm really going to be curious about this PGA Championship in Rochester, New York, in the middle of May because yeah. I guarantee it's snowing in Rochester today. Well, it's just. To, I, there's a point I think I want to sneak in here just so the, the nobody gets out of nobody gets uppity. Um, yes, we understand that the PGA Tour says, well, if you go late on Thursday when it's windy and the greens are bumpy, then it, it's only fair to let you go early on Friday so you have smooth greens and less wind. True, but statistically, we all know and the players know that it's a, an advantage. You just look at the it's how it's worked out even though the the bumpy greens and the wind yes that's true that's why it's an advantage to go early on thursday but that rest factor the relaxation the decompression the chance to go to the range both days thursday afternoon and friday morning work on your game work with your coach whatever catch up with your family whatever you need to do that whole day off totally outweighs any vagaries that the weather may give you and statistically it works out where it's just a huge advantage. So it's not us saying this, it's us pointing it out. Statistically, right. We're just Statistically, pointing out. Statistically, on average, it's a 2.66 stroke Correct. difference. For gambling, this is a big deal. Yeah. And go ahead and say your Tiger point about the PGA Championship. Well, like I, I've said, this is, like I said this a year ago, Tiger has played early, late in every single PGA Championship. Now that's not, and, and so we, we, we left a couple things open early in the show, so we want to talk about the contrived product We're, we're getting times. there, we're getting there. Okay. We're not there yet. All right. We're still at early late. <laughs> and you can wrap that up if you wish. All right, but, and, and by the way, so it was 66% of the players in the top 30, and, and remember, Rom withdrew. On the weekend. On the weekend, and the weekend. Rory stunk the place up, so it could have been, it should have been more like only eight of the top 30 yes. were on the... Um, if things had gone according to plan, plan it maybe been, that's a good segue into the yeah. next point, which is either managed or the setup, which are kind of similar. But right. if it had gone to plan, was there a plan? Well, we might get to that next. If it had gone to plan as far as the PGA Tour, who desperately needs a great event for ratings so they can wave at their sponsors and say, see how well we do... Um, as they try to sell for next year, right? Land sponsors for the designated events. The, the Rory should have made the stupid cut, Rory, and Rom should not have gone home, John. So, you know, fine, Rory didn't play well. John going home, not, I don't think that's very popular inside of the uh, no. corporate facilities there at Ponte Vedra with, with uh, Jay and his team. But had they done what they were supposed to do then you're saying that the early late advantage would have been even more lopsided it, it could have been a lot greater because um, Scheffler came out of the early the winner came out of early late and the winner now True. has come out of, winners come out of early late i believe now 14 of the last 16 players championships oh, there you go uh, what there else you go. so if you're going to gamble you have to bet on somebody if you want to put the odds at least a little bit in your favor you have to take somebody who gets the early late start and and people in florida i'm sure we have a, a number of people in florida people uh, where it's windy when you play golf maybe that's australia maybe it's the melbourne area probably south africa well certainly the the uk you're it's an automatic you know that the morning time is always going to be better almost always i mean it's 90 percent of the time probably than the afternoon as far as wind and what is the number one factor to proximity to the hole? Wind. Yeah. Wind by far, in a way. And then where you putt from is the number one factor in determining how many putts you're going to make. So that extra five feet of prox, if you're 
five to six to seven feet away versus 12 feet away, the percentages of putts may fall off the cliff. Yeah. Fall off a cliff. Five feet, they're like 60%, 70% now. Um, and 12 feet is like 15, right. 20. So that's night and day. Yeah. Night and day. When the stroke difference is like two shots between first, or not even. Uh, right. The stroke difference between first and 20th is like two, two, not less than two shots around. Right. So it's... And what what is um, what is pretty much unique for that tournament, the players, how hard and fast they make the greens, the con- they could have played I I think for another at least half hour on Friday afternoon, but they like we got to cut it off. Scheffler's the only guy who's looking like he's going to be on the leaderboard, because Ramey hit the ball in the middle of the green on 17. Okay. It rolls off and he mm-hmm. makes the quad. Put a pin on that. <laughs> Put a pin on that. Oh, I thought we were ready for that. We're, well, Sorry. I think we should do the weekend setup. Okay. Because that's going to definitely spill into the last point. So, well, Saturday's setup. The know. last point is the managed point. All right. But Saturday's setup was the weekend impressive. setup or Saturday if you want to do both. Well, my, my big headline for Saturday's setup is Tom Hoagie breaks the course record shooting five under. Now, who sets up the course at the Players' Championship? The tour. The tour, the yeah. Tour. It's not an accident. It's 100% planned. So, so, if nothing else, we're getting crappy ratings. we gotta make, we got to make it. We're going to turn Saturday at least into a birdie fest. So, they look at the field. They look who's in contention. They look at everything with ratings in mind. Right. Yeah. So, my, my point is, so all, par, all the, par, the, the, the four par fives were reachable. The 12th hole was playing basically driver three wood, so it was just a long par three. So it was set up as a par 67. Not only that, but three of the par threes were playing wedge. They were under 160 for yeah, these that guys. That one got my attention. When you I, told me that, I'm like, what, I, the par threes were all 160 or less? I was like, what? what that's, I mean, that's a joke. It's, an, it's a wedge slash nine iron in the modern bag because the loft is changed. So at least on eight of the whole minimum, whether you could, if you could only hit the ball out of your own shadow, you were still chipping or wedging to eight of the 18 holes. And only one guy shot 10 under. That's what, that, the surprising thing to me, because they were ideal scoring conditions after the overnight rains. That wow. was the, the shocking thing to well, me. They, well, they redid the course. They had to set it up, right? You just made yeah. me think of that. Because they had, they had to finish Friday's round Saturday morning. Right. Then they reset the pins and the yardages. They reset everything. They mowed it. It was in perfect conditions to score. I was, like I said, I was surprised Tom Hoagie, Tom Hoagie walked off the course and yeah, looked up and goes, oh, it's a, I shot a course, I didn't know I shot a course record because it didn't feel, in other words, right. reading between the lines, he was even saying it didn't feel like a course yes. record because the course was not set up challenging. It wasn't, he wasn't hitting four irons stiff. Yeah. He was hitting wedges. He was hitting wedges yeah. stiff. And driving the ball well. You know. And, yeah. right. and, and the greens were rolling. And nice. the greens were just, you'd hit it and it'd stop right where you ran. Just know. like Friday. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Maybe not just not. like Friday. No. So what was Sunday's setup, or do you want to move on to the point, the last point? Well, Sunday, had, you, you had your typical Sunday pins. That, that, was, not, that was not the issue. Um, there was nothing they were going to do Sunday. Unless Scheffler got a stomach flu, it was gonna, he was going to walk away with it. I think that's why there was not a... There was ch- stomach flu going around. Yeah. I, but I, I think that's why some of the stars, like Hideki, just he was playing well. He enjoyed it. He kind of faded at the end. But some of the guys, the Speeths, et cetera, they were like, well, if I don't make an eagle on the second hole, I'm not going to catch him. You know, I, I, someone like Jordan Spieth needed to shoot 11 or 1,200 well, to question. catch him. I didn't watch the tournament. So did they take double bogey off the table with the setup on Sunday? I don't know that. This is a live question. Because uh, that's a big consideration. You know, the problem is you still have those air, the peat die areas. Mm-hmm. You still can't short side yourself. Well, the pin on 17 is going to be where it is. The pin on 17 is where it is. The pin but, on 18 is where it was. Um, 14 was the 14 seemed to be the 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 real challenging hole. How hard were the greens? The greens were not hard. They were not firm. Okay, so they were receptive. They were receptive. So In that, fact, it took Min Woo Lee out of the tournament. I, I, I want to say, is it the fifth hole? Audience, bear with me here. Give me a little rope here. It's either the fourth through the sixth hole where Min Woo Lee makes the triple bogey. He lays up. He gets in really rough. So he lays it up. He's got to come over water. He hits his wedge a little heavy and spins it back into the water, makes triple. So his day's over. Um, obviously, if the greens were their typical hard and fast, the ball still would have went forward because if he hits it fat, it's not going to have the spin that it 
needed to, to spin back in the water. Well. So the greens they, were they, receptive for some. Yeah, they were they were very receptive. And they and Scotty was how many strokes was the lead? He was two in the clear uh, to Starting? start the day. Two? Okay. And like I said, there was there were only uh, six or seven people with well, they five want or they six want shots. let's just say it. What you do have they want at this point. Yeah. Sunday morning when there's or Saturday night when they're doing the strategy for Sunday to where to set the course, how to set the course. They want Scheffler to win. Right. Scheffler yeah. needs to win. Yeah. We can't have, you know, somebody that's out of the top 50 win this thing. That wouldn't be good for us from well, a ratings point of view. And there were not, there were just, like I said, you had Fleetwood up there, but there were, there were no big names, no star well, power probably, on the well, leaderboard. I know you, as a smart guy, you probably know. So I'm going to ask you a question I haven't asked. We'll see how he does. Uh, and this is not going to be edited. Um, what so what if you're Scheffler's caddy and they come to you and say, Hey, caddy, what do you what is what does Scotty need and set up to, to have a nice, comfortable win today? Meaning, you know, how do you want the golf course? So it'll maybe elevate you, you can shoot more under par, or screw all your competitors into shooting over par and they have to chase you. How do you want the course set up? If he could draw it up on a map, how would he like it to be? Uh, how would he like it to be? For his game. For his game. Oh, he's going to want the hard holes to have right-hand pins. That's about the only thing. Now, because you have the traditional pins on 16, 17, 18. He knows where those pins are going to be. He's going to hit it in the middle of the green on all of those greens. Um, so 14 was a right pin. That's the hardest hole on the course. Uh, however... Because, does he plays a fade? He plays a fade, typically. And he's a good putter. And he's a good putter. Um, I, so middle of the green works nicely for middle of the green Scotty. works nicely. So I don't think it really mattered. I, I well, think it was the typical. The par fives were still reachable. Nothing special there. Um, the par, but everything else was in its traditional pin placement. So I don't think there was a lot of manipulation that needed to go on. Mm -hmm. When you look at the leaderboard, nobody else was going to really do much of anything. Um, yeah. Well, they took. It sounds to me, and I didn't watch the tournament again, that they kind of they, they didn't add more difficulty. No. They could have. But that would bring a, a catastrophe into play. For Scheffler could, you know, have a stroke on one of the could have a heart attack on one of the holes and make mm. a triple. Yeah, I, 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 they. I don't think it mattered. Um, well, the rough getting, was the getting rough. to the next point, which the, is a managed outcome. Right. Well, the managed outcome. Well, let's segue to that. The managed, ready? the managed outcome. Let's be honest. Happened on Friday afternoon. All right. Well, let's just go there. All right. Right. The managed outcome happened on Friday afternoon. The weather was coming. Point number six. Is, Ramey, is the PGA Tour managing the outcome to the extent that they can. Absolutely, 110%. Okay, that's what I w was hoping you'd say. Yeah, there, there's no question because obviously... Well, how do they do that? How do they manage the outcome as best they can? They can't manage it to the T like other sports. But Well, you have the top three in the world getting the beneficial start. Early, late start. That's the main thing. Mm -hmm. Weather helped them immensely for Scheffler because, as I said, Friday afternoon... Well, this tournament had a wild card. This tournament had a wild card the with the weather. Friday, Friday afternoon, some things happened. Yeah. What happened on Friday afternoon? So the first thing is one of the non-stars, and I can't remember his first name. His last name is Ramey. He was leading. Ramey. Right. He comes to 17, and he, like I said, as we had talked about, he hit it in the middle of the green. I on couldn't Friday. believe that that on, ball went over. On Friday. On Friday. He makes a quadruple bogey. How many times it hit? He hits in the water on 17, if you didn't see the tournament. By hitting the ball in the essentially in the middle of the landing area where you right. want it to go, and the ball bounces over the green bounces in the water over the green. twice, right? Twi well, then he goes to the drop area, and he hits it really where he should have. I thought it was a good shot. Bo I thought both of them were good shots, and this one trickled into the green also, trickled off into the water. Very nice golf swing. Wind is moving it to the right. Will it stop? The answer is no. He put it up in the air, didn't he? He did. Look out. That ball needs to settle. Oh. And that is the fourth player today alone to put it in the water twice. He redrops. He makes his quad. He was leading. He went from like 13 under to 9 under, something along those lines. I, I, it was hard for me to and pay his, attention because I have to DVR through all the He's rattled at this point. Yeah, he's rattled, obviously. Okay. So the, the green at 17 now, because the tour guys in the truck or in the corporate headquarters are like, 
Uh, what we, just happened? What just happened? Right. Ball's so, not holding on 17. So you have, two cho- you have two choices. One, you syringe the greens like they did at Shinnecock when Phil potentially should have won. They had that little in the US three Open. in the U.S. Open. Mm-hmm. Or we, you stop the tournament. Well, how do we stop well, the tournament? Or stop three. Or, or option three, which is do nothing. Do nothing. Or let, you could have done nothing. But let everybody gonna, suffer. Like, they're not going to do nothing. Apparently not. Yeah. Because what happened? Well, they, they stopped the tournament. They stopped I, the tournament. I was surprised because as I'm DVRing, because I can't watch it live, there's, too, there's still too much fluff. Um, I'm like, going, well, wait, the weather's coming. Mm-hmm. It's not there yet. When did it show up? I, did we know? I, I, I don't know. I turned it off. Hmm. But it seemed like they could have played for a little well, so while. They, they, let's just run the, they had three options. That, so we're saying that the, the ball is now going, it's not holding on 17, meaning whoever's behind Ramey, is going to potentially have, have an issue. just as big a problem. And we know that Scheffler's out there. Right. And whoever else is out there behind them. So they could have done nothing. Probably the right thing to do, maybe. They could have watered the greens to soften them up to make them playable. Probably what they would have done. Or they looked at the radar and went, hey, we're going to get lucky here. We're going to have a weather delay or a potential right. weather delay. We can just call an audible and just go to weather delay. So those are your choices. And we're saying that 100% the t- tour was talking about it. Yeah. And 100% they made a decision to do what they did, which is go declare a weather delay when they did, bring everybody back on Saturday when the weather, we've already looked at the weather, it's going to be fine. They, they were prepping the fans for a weather delay like an hour or so before. Now, granted, it was a, they, they would have had to cut the tournament off at some point, 15 minutes to an hour after. I don't know exactly when the rain and the storms yeah. and all that could be came. random we could be crazy or it could be managed yeah and it's a very important tournament with very important tv ratings because all their money comes from tv essentially yeah. and they and did what they did they did get to pick it up saturday morning sure they get a lecture golf they on saturday when golf. there's more viewers more viewers exactly right? a weekend it's all good um, i don't see any downside here with having nope. a weather delay or we're crazy and it's just random yeah, it's, uh, you know, and, know. and who knows? I don't think so. It worked out in their favor. I don't think so. Let's be honest. Yes, it did. Oddly. Oddly. It Oddly, it favor. didn't yeah. work against them. Yeah. All right, I think we covered them all. So it's a managed sport. I, I guess we'll go deeper on that some other time. Yeah. But if, the, if we're correct, then it, it's unfortunate that that's the case. But we've been sniffing that for a long time now yeah. on the PGA Tour, right? Um, I really think they... And this is my my last point. That early late start to me is such a huge advantage. All of these majors go to um, extra holes, or are won by one shot, and you're looking at a shot and a third on Friday and and uh, excuse me Thursday and Friday, a two point six six percent advantage. Uh, excuse me, shot advantage. That's that's huge. I really think if you're going to have a system like they have now. Hey, earn your right for the early late start. They should put all the top 50 some players in there and you know, let's face it, give the top guys an even playing field. Or they could go to a shotgun, but we can't have shotgun starts. No, that's that would be. That would be bad. That would be uh, soiling bad. the history of the game some, somehow. So that would be my remedy. Yeah. You've you've earned your way so what, there's 144 players typically in these events. Mm-hmm. What is that 72? So the top 72 Mm-hmm. Get the early late start, and the rest of you oh. earn your way into the. If earn you, your if way you did it that way, yeah, yeah, because Spieth does, did not get an early late start in this tournament. I saw a stat; it was either last year or the year before, where Spieth has had the bad weather draw, the bad draw, fifty-six percent of the time. And the, the tour says that it's a draw. It's a draw. It's a random draw. Unless you're Tiger. Unless you're Tiger, yeah. and then it's not random. Right. So um, theoretically, then it's honest. And a flip of a coin, it's going to work out. But it seems to be working out the other way. I guarantee you that the first thing that they did was put Rom, Rory, and Scheffler at the 8 o'clock-ish tea time on Thursday morning. And they went from there. Yes. I, it's, yes. Because there, there it's, was, also, it's also They about, didn't get together on Wednesday and flip a coin. Because it's also about ratings. I mean, as we know. It's a product. It's a product. They, they're calling it a product now. That's the only thing they're doing that's legitimate. It's a product. Yeah. And it's fine. I, I don't. It's fine that that's 
just tell us. I guess that's maybe that's what we're saying. Yeah. Just tell us. Just tell us. Tell us. What they didn't tell us, though, were all the things we just went over. What they didn't say. Okay. What they didn't tell us. Yeah. Yeah. Or they didn't tell us. Yeah, I don't like that. All right. B-team is out. Dr. Darkstar is out. <laughs>